Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk year video. Would you be the jerk for making your own kid walk home from the hospital? We'll find out but first a story from Sarah Jake 2022. Am I the jerk for flipping out on my fiance for cancelling all the vegan food options from our wedding food menu behind my back? My fiance, 31 year old male, and I, 25 year old female, are getting married soon. There wasn't that much disagreed on during the wedding planning except for food. Me and my family are vegans, and there's so many reasons why we chose this lifestyle, and one of them being that we have a history of health issues. My fiancé and his family are the complete opposite. They're hardcore meat eaters, which is fine by me, obviously. However, when deciding on the wedding food menu, I wanted to add four to five vegan options. My fiancé and his mom objected, saying it was a waste of money over food that isn't real food. They also argued that this would be offensive for their guests and suggested my vegan options just be the good old salad and appetizers. His mom wanted cupcakes. I said no because, for one, it's me and my family who's paying, and two, I want to make my guests feel welcome and not be treated as second-class citizens by being served salad. My fiancé made a face and said, isn't that what vegans eat? I refused to argue about it and said it was final. The other day, I found out that he had cancelled all the vegan options and took them off the menu completely and behind my back. I was seething. I called him at work, but he kept hanging up on me. I went straight to his workplace and confronted him there and just flipped out on him. He was stunned to see me. He at first said it was his mom's idea, then told me to go home because I was making a scene at the office. The fight continued at home, and he defended himself by saying that I sort of made him resort to doing this after I kept brushing off his thoughts and input, and refusing to accommodate for his family. But there were plenty of meat options, why can't I get 4-5 to five vegan options, when I'm paying for it? He yelled that it was his wedding too, not my family's. My family said it was fine and they'll figure it out and told me to let it go, but I refused. Am I the jerk for putting my foot down on this? I think it's safe to say that OP's not the jerk here. I mean, let alone the fact that they went behind their back, it's just, what's the actual issue with having vegan meals? I just can't fathom why it's so stigmatized. For any of you guys that are watching that aren't vegan or vegetarian, if you went to a wedding or an event and you found out they served only vegan options, would that bother you in any way? I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Our next story is from Practical Grand 6104 Am I the jerk for telling my wife it's ridiculous to cry over soup? My wife is 4 months pregnant with our 5th child. We have a 7 year old girl, a 6 year old girl, a 4 year old boy, and a 2 year old boy now. Since childcare is so expensive, she's been staying home. Money's tight right now and her car broke down so we've been relying on mine. She texted me and told me that she was craving a particular can of soup, so I bought it and brought it home. She placed it on the counter and said she would make it after she gave the kids a bath. While she was upstairs, my dad came over and mentioned he was hungry, so I told him to help himself to anything in the kitchen as we had made dinner shortly before. Well, he ended up leaving to go home, and my wife came downstairs, then I heard her frantically searching for something. I asked what she was doing, and she was looking for the soup she left out. I told her I haven't seen it and that my dad came over, but he doesn't usually eat canned foods. I called him and he admitted that he did in fact take it and that he was sorry because he was unaware she was saving it. When I told her this, she started sobbing and saying she can never have one thing in this house and how bad she was craving it and wanting it so bad, she cried for almost an hour over it. Later I told her she was being ridiculous and that she was an adult and crying over something as stupid as a can of soup was for children. She told me I didn't understand, and she's feeling very emotional lately and stressed. I talked to my mom, who told me I needed to give her grace, and that my words were very a hole -ish. Am I the jerk? I knew we were already heading down a really bad path when the story opened with, my wife is four months pregnant. I'm of the opinion that if you're deeply pregnant and you're craving some type of food, and you experience the tragic death of that food when it was nearly in your grasp, you can cry over it. Pregnancy is a stressful and emotional thing, and I don't blame anybody that's undergoing it crying over a can of soup. Honestly, from what I've heard, it sounds kind of par for the course. The only thing surprising me here is they have a 7-year-old, a 6-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 2-year-old, and OP hasn't learned by now. This next story is from Extension Charge 9781. 
Am I the jerk for yelling at my girlfriend for baking a dessert for a dinner party? I, 26-year-old male, have been dating my girlfriend Rosie, 23-year-old female, for a year now. Rosie and my mother do not get along. It's just about the fact that their personality differences are so large. My mom's a more conservative and reserved person, and Rosie's the opposite of that. My mom's a really picky person and has never been happy with anyone I date over the years. But I usually ignore her because it's not her life. Yes, I always shut down my mother's snarky comments about anyone I date. On to the problem, tomorrow night my mother's hosting a dinner party for everyone in our family. I'm not sure about the other families and cultures, but usually when we throw dinner parties, everyone will bring something. I thought this was the perfect time for Rosie and my mom to get along better. I told Rosie that she should home make something. I also made something. My mother hates anything sweet. So I told Rosie to refrain from baking any desserts. Rosie said that she wanted to bake something because it's what she does best when it comes to the kitchen. I told her to look up a recipe on Google. She was quiet and about an hour later, I come downstairs because I could smell something sweet and I found Rosie piping macaron batter. I freaked out. I started yelling about how I told her specifically not to make anything sweet because this was her one chance to get on my mother's good side and I feel like she only made the dessert to be petty. She got upset and told me not to raise my voice at her and that she wasn't doing it to be petty. She just doesn't care what my mother thinks of her and that my mother's not the only guest at the dinner party. I got frustrated and made the mistake of telling her to stay home instead and she told me that she would and that she now wouldn't go no matter what even if I changed my mind. I regret telling her that because if she doesn't go, my mother will really not like her. But am I the jerk for telling her not to bake something sweet? No, I don't think OP's the jerk for saying, hey, you shouldn't bake something sweet. But if they really want to, and they frankly don't care what OP's mom thinks, well, they might have a disagreement as far as what OP thinks they should do. But it's not worth a blow up and an argument and a direct attack like, well, maybe you should just stay home then. It's clearly not OP's intent and prerogative, but in an indirect way, it's kind of like OP is playing mama boy, trying to get their partner to walk on eggshells when going to a party. Our next story is from throwaway72828292292. Am I the jerk for getting matching tattoos of my best friend after his girlfriend told me it made her uncomfortable? So basically, I, 19-year-old female, have been best friends with Devin, 20-year-old male, since we were teenagers around 13 or 14 years old. We've been extremely close since then, and his friendship means more to me than any other relationship in my life. When we were around 16, he casually said, hey, maybe we should get matching tattoos to remind us that we're always there for each other. And I said it sounded cool, and it wasn't really mentioned again. We were minors, so it wasn't exactly plausible. But recently, we passed a tattoo place, and I joked, Remember when we were younger and we wanted to get matching tattoos? Which led to a discussion leading up to us deciding that we wanted to do it for real. We took a few days to decide on the design. My friend's a graphic designer so she made it for us. But it's basically a light bulb shaped like a heart with the words, I'll be your light, love you always, sort of woven through the image. The light bulb thing is an inside thing between us and we always say love you or I love you so it wasn't anything off-putting. And then, the day before the appointment was scheduled, Devin's girlfriend Bianca came up to me hysterically, saying that we couldn't go through with the tattoos. I'm assuming Devin must have told her. She didn't really give me any room to speak, but she talked a lot about how uncomfortable the idea made her. They'd been in an extremely serious relationship for a while, and he was starting to consider proposal. But I told her that I was still getting the tattoo, as Devin had been an important part of my life for years and meant a lot to me and the tattoo was our idea together not just mine obviously we went through with it and it felt really nice for a while until bianca called me and started freaking out apparently i'm a horrible person and the tattoo was too romantic even though it was not we're just extremely close friends i'm sure she has friends she would say i love you too it's not a big deal but now she's saying she wants it to be removed and i really don't know what to do because on one hand, I don't want to be responsible for ruining Devin's relationship and possible marriage, but on the other hand, I don't want to get rid of the tattoo. 
This is a really weird situation, honestly, and I can only go from how I would personally feel. And I would say personally, both sides are the jerks here. For OP to say, oh, this heart-shaped light bulb that says, I'll be your light, love you always, is not romantic at all. I just wouldn't be able to have those words said to my face and take it seriously. Intent or not, that is a very romantic looking tattoo. That's the kind of we've been married for 10 years and we're doubling down on the commitment type tattoo. On the other side, Devin might be a bit of a jerk for getting that tattoo when it clearly upsets their partner so much. And their partner is also kind of a jerk for outright going and just demanding that you get it removed. I don't know what to think here, honestly. It's all kinds of mixed up and weird vibes. What do you guys think? Is OP the jerk here? Is everybody the jerk? I'd like to know what you guys think because this could be really touchy depending on what angle you come from. This next story is from TAIOP. Am I the jerk for having an operation in the same week as my work colleague's wedding causing my manager to cancel her time off? I'm in my late 20s and work in a large retail chain. I have a work colleague Candace, 22 to 23 year old female, who's planning on getting married later this month. Originally, she was planning the wedding for 2020. However, due to lockdowns, etc., it had to be postponed to 2022. She's booked two weeks off for her wedding and for her honeymoon nearly two years in advance, and everything is paid for. Me and Candace work in the same store section, White Goods. Now, I had bad eyesight as long as I can remember myself and was finally able to save for an operation. Upon the checkup, the doctor said the operation must happen sooner rather than later. They explain that they can see a small rupture in one of my eyes and they're worried that if I fall down or hit my head or due to stress, it'll become worse and they won't be able to fix it, which would make me uneligible for an operation. Due to this, the operation was scheduled for the time of Candace's wedding. When I've told my boss that I'll need two weeks off for the same week, they declined my request saying it's too short notice. And Candace already booked it off, so us two can't be off at the same time. I had to go through the doctor to have a note stating I'll be having an operation and due to recovery will not be able to work for those two weeks. And legally, it is not something my boss can decline. Because of this, and since Candace's wedding is more than two weeks away, he cancelled her holiday request. She can't get any refunds at such short notice and she said she'll take unpaid leave in this case. However, our boss said he won't be granting her any leave as we're understaffed. Someone started their maternity leave recently, and if she won't show up, then they'll treat it as an unauthorized absence, which will lead to dismissal. During our shift, Candace had a go at me and called me a massive jerk for scheduling the operation during her wedding and getting signed off, making her even more stressed before the wedding. Some other colleagues believe I'm in the wrong too, and should have chosen different dates. Am I the jerk? I think OP is clearly not the jerk here. If anybody should be mad at anybody, Candace should be mad at their work. Honestly, the fact that they can go and just uncancel a holiday that you've already got scheduled off is kind of ridiculous. I don't know if OP shared what their deal is with Candace, but if Candace knows that OP has a very serious and urgent and critical eye surgery coming up that just can't be ignored for an extra couple weeks because it might permanently impact their vision otherwise, then Candace would be a major piece of work. This next story is from Throw RA Economy 550. Am I the jerk for returning home after I found out that my husband booked first class for him and his friend while I got economy? My husband and I, 30s, haven't been on a trip out of country for years, while he goes every year with his best friend. His reasons for going with him is because they both go to attend sporting events. This year, my husband told me I could go with him and his friend since they were visiting a new destination. He paid for my ticket and everything else since I'm a stay-at-home mom and have no job. The kids were left with my mom. However, when I found out that he had booked first class for himself and his friend while I got economy, I just couldn't hold my tongue. I confronted him about it and he at first refused to discuss. Then when the argument got heated, he yelled, I paid for your ticket for freak's sake, isn't that enough? then kept on about how I should stop acting like I was royalty, and that if I come to think about it, even economy's fine for me since I technically don't work anyway. I cried because of what he said, but decided to just not go all together. He changed his tone and started begging me to just go with what he planned, but I declined. 
I went to pick the kids up from my mom's house, and he came back three hours later, huffing and buffing about what happened. His friend sent me a text calling me entitled, and said this was the reason why he didn't want my husband to take me with them, and I just proved his point. I didn't respond, but I blocked him since he's gotten increasingly rude over the past few months. He, my husband, said I kept crying about being excluded, and this is what happens when he finally decides to include me. Am I the jerk for not settling for economy? By the way, he's perfectly capable of financing the trip. How can you even call it being included if you don't even sit together in the plane? And let me guess, when they get there, he and his friend are going to take the hotel room and she's going to get the Motel 6 back down the road a ways, right? I don't know if it's too far of me, but I would start questioning if there's something more going on between those two friends. Especially considering the friend's behavior afterwards where they keep texting you and calling you entitled. It just seems overly defensive and something that might be motivated by other reasons. Our next story is from Shift Dry 9280 Am I the jerk for cutting my portion sizes in half at the dinner table after being served heaping portions by my mom? Growing up, my family and I were all fat. They never taught me about good nutrition, portion sizes, and the only exercise I got was gym class. So, of course, I was used to all this, right? Especially since a lot of my friends were the same. When I went to college, I was exposed to a lot of new things and I learned quickly that my family's habits weren't healthy. For years, they always said the weight was genetic. When I'd go to lunch with my friend group at the dining hall, I started noticing that my portion sizes were huge against theirs. I cut down my portions, and I would join them doing yoga and stuff. Naturally, I ended up losing some weight, like size 22 to tight size 12. I really like the way I look. You can see my collarbones but I ended up having to go back home during summer break, and I have been surprised at just how different I feel from my family. When we would order pizzas two years ago, we would basically get our own, and it would be gone that night. We had pizza night when I got home, and I ate two slices, and that was it. Last week, my mom made her special lasagna. I made a size salad to go with it. She always plates the meals and then sets a big dish in the middle so we can have more. Well, the piece she gave me was way too big, so I cut it in half and served myself more salad. My sister immediately got on my case about how rude that was to mom because she worked so hard on the lasagna. I said I couldn't eat that much food in one sitting, and she scoffed and said that didn't used to be a problem. I said yes, but if you can't tell, things have changed a little. She got on my face and said that I brought my college BS home with me and I should have left it at the door and ate like a normal person. I told her that I was eating like a normal person, that everyone I knew at school eats like this and that we're the abnormality, that it's not normal to be so stuffed at the table you're in pain. My brother chimed in saying that I'd just gain the weight back, so stop pretending that I'm better than they are, but I don't think I am at all. I'm no better than anyone. But I also don't think I'm wrong for sticking to smaller portions instead of being stuffed all the time. Am I the jerk? Well, no wonder everybody in that family is overweight. If somebody actually tries to be healthy, they pass their insecurities on to them and basically make it such a negative thing to even bring a health-focused attitude into that household. I would hate to hear what that family has to say when you ask them about vegans or vegetarians. Their entire existence is probably a huge joke to those kinds of people. Our next story is from Otherwise Job 8545. Am I the jerk for telling my ex-husband I won't babysit my daughter? My ex-husband and I divorced about four years ago. I've taken a couple of vacations with the kids since the divorce. He went on one trip with them, which was canceled after one day due to a hurricane. He makes a lot of snide remarks about how much I pay for the vacations, but I live a pretty frugal life and my kids are my splurge. We have 50-50 custody and neither of us pay child support. My ex has family in Texas. They live on a lake with an in-ground pool and a boat. They're close with him. He has a standing invite. The trip would cost my ex a flight, probably one or two meals out. My ex seems to be buying a new truck, bought a one wheel, joined a golf club, and makes solid money. I don't think he's hurting and I don't begrudge him any of it. I just wish he'd take my two kids on the vacation they desperately want with him. But I respect that he has every right to spend his money how he wants to. Here's where it gets weird. Monday, he asked me what I'm doing for Labor Day, which, according to our divorce agreement, is his holiday with the kids. I don't have plans, so he asked if I could babysit. I roll. 
my daughter so he can take my son to Texas. I asked why he wasn't going to take my daughter and he said the trip is my son's birthday present and if my daughter asks to go to Texas for her birthday, he'll take her alone. My kids are close and if asked, I know my son wouldn't want to go without his sister. I told him I didn't want to put the kids in that position and he should ask his girlfriend, lives with them, been together four years, stays with the kids when he travels for work, to just stay at home with her. But apparently she's going on the trip too. I told him it was playing favorites and I wouldn't enable it and he blew up on me. We have a history of him being abusive so I know I can be very quick to jump to conclusions and get protective of my kids. I know this would hurt my daughter but maybe I'm overreacting? He called me controlling and I'm trying to decide if he has any basis for that statement. Note, if he books the trip without her, I will 100% watch her and he knows it. I think OP is not the jerk here. I have never been a parent, but I feel like if you have two kids, especially two kids that are very close both in age and relationship, taking only one of them definitely gives a favoritism feel whether you like it or not. And frankly, I think it's weird to just take one kid. I know it's their birthday, but why would you not want to give both of your kids that experience? What motivation or reasoning do they have to leave one kid home? They just don't want to take care of two kids? Favoritism? You be the judge. Our next story is from I'm a 35 year old white man. Am I the jerk for saying it's disgusting to shower twice a week? For context, my boyfriend's sister was complaining to me that her boyfriend has stinky skin you know where. We're quite close and I never repeat this stuff to her brother. And I asked her if he cleans under it when he showers, to which she said yes. And then I asked her how many times he showers, to which she said twice a week. Personally, I shower once a day. Maybe I'll miss the occasional day in a week if I'm really tired, but it's usually only a day. To this I said, Oh, that's disgusting. Twice a week is nowhere near enough. And then she got super offended and hurt because she also only showers twice a week. Because she wants to preserve the natural oils on her skin. I tried to backtrack to keep the peace, but she knows it's BS and now she won't talk to me. She's been off with me for a few days and I can't even discuss why with my boyfriend because how am I supposed to tell him his beloved sister has a boyfriend with a stinky you know what? Am I the jerk for this? I'm not sure if I should apologize to her. In all honesty, she doesn't smell but I still think the twice a week rule is ridiculous because you still get that buildup of sweat and dirt and I don't think washing twice a week is sustainable to keep it off. I think OP's reaction does make them the jerk here It's something that I think they should go to her and apologize and say all their life they did it a certain way and they had a misconception about if it's really enough and they apologize for upsetting them. The bottom line is it depends really on the person how much you can shower and stay properly clean. Honestly, the boyfriend probably could shower twice a week and still stay clean if they did some additional hygiene practices for some, you could say, hot zones. I mean, the bottom line is it clearly works for her at least, and nobody likes to feel like they're judged like that. So I think it's at least worth an apology. Our next story is from Angry and Tired 11. Am I the jerk for kicking strangers out of my mom's hospice room at 1 a.m.? My mother's currently in hospice. I flew across the country to be with her till the end. I have an older sister that lives with my mother. When I got here, my sister said that she had a friend that would like to visit my mom, but didn't have transportation. My mom said she wanted to see him, so I drove 30 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes round trip, to get this man and bring him back. When I got there, I found out that his husband was also coming. Both these men were strangers to me, but I did it so he could see my mom one last time. The plan we agreed on was I would take them home at 8pm because I had to pick up our other sister from the airport, and they were on the way. When the time came to leave, the man and his husband had some sort of emotional meltdown and didn't want to leave my mother. I told them that I didn't have time to deal with their drama because I had to get to the airport, so I just left. When I made it back to the hospice with my other sister, it was 1am. The two of us walked in and there were now four people and our oldest sister in the room. Our mom was sleeping but they were laughing, joking and watching a loud video on someone's phone. I asked who the new people were, and a woman said she and her boyfriend were here as emotional support for my mom's friend. They just showed up to surprise him. What the freak, it's 1am and these people didn't know my mother or our family. 
My mother's never liked many men around her, so there was no way she would be okay with three strangers watching her on her deathbed. My oldest sister didn't see anything wrong with them being here. I was so furious because that was just the most disrespectful thing I had ever seen. They were not family, nor were they here to support our family. I was so furious that I told everyone to shut up and leave. I was so enraged and I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was not nice. My oldest sister went out in the lobby sobbing and made a huge commotion. She went on a rant about how our mom loved this friend and how she saved him from a bad situation. We all almost got kicked out of hospice for disturbing the other patients. Thankfully, the staff agreed with me and allowed myself and the sister I just picked up to stay. Everyone else had to leave. I received a text shortly after telling me how awful I was for kicking them out. My oldest sister also said I was in the wrong because our mother wanted an Irish wake. We're not Irish and she's not dead yet. You don't let strangers have a party in her hospice room at 1am. So am I the jerk? The bottom line here I think is OP was looking out for their mom and solely their mom. So I don't think they can be the jerk here as much as everybody else would try to make OP the bad guy for kicking them out. Frankly, all of these people that have to be kicked out probably aren't going to be thinking of OP nicely anyways. Our next story is from AITA Bridesmaid Drama. Am I the jerk for kicking the bridesmaid off my destination wedding the day before the event? This happened a while ago, but the person involved reached out for an apology from me, yet I don't believe I did anything wrong. Short background, I have a best friend Naya, who's black and comes from one of the least developed countries in Central Africa. I've known and loved her for many years, so when planning my wedding, I didn't have any doubts that she'll be my maid of honor. I invited another girl, Jane, who I knew for not that long, but we were quite close, to be one of my bridesmaids. Due to all my friends living in different countries, Naya and Jane only met for the first time the day before my wedding, which they both traveled to attend. This night before the wedding, we had a lovely time with the girls. But then Jane started to ask Naya really strange questions. Like, do they really eat insects and live in huts? Which was, yes, strange, but also can be seen as a curiosity of another country. But as the evening progressed, Jane's behavior did as well. Jane ended up telling Naya a story about some beggar she had seen, referring to him by the N-word. That's when I decided to intervene got Jane in private, and asked what in the world thought she could talk like this, let alone to Naya. She became defensive and quoted, Naya's not the n-word, she's so pretty and clean, I was talking about that guy. After telling her off and explaining what kind of racist butt she is, in much ruder form, I asked her to leave and to not show up at my wedding, as well as never talk to me again. Last night she reached out expecting the apology and a payback for the flight she took for my wedding which I really doubt I should do as I'm still very angry with her. I don't want to discuss it with my friends, so please Reddit, tell me if I'm the jerk. OP's not the jerk. OP saved every single person that had to associate with them some serious time. If OP at their wedding ever has a thought of Jane come across their mind, that should only serve to make them laugh and enjoy the night even more because they're not there. And our final story of the day is from TA Drink Drama. Am I the jerk for making my son walk home after he was in the hospital? I'm female. My son Jay, 19 year old male, is staying home from college. I know my son goes to parties, drinks, like someone innocent his age. So every time he goes out, I ask him not to overdo it and not to drive if he drinks. He usually does what I ask. Saturday there was a graduation party at a college in my town, and he got an invite to the party. Since I knew he was going to drink, I confiscated his keys and he took the Uber to the party, always giving him the same warning not to overdo it. Around 6am, I didn't pay attention to the time because it's very common for him to sleep unannounced at friends' houses. I got a call saying that Jay was hospitalized and I went into despair, speeding to the hospital by car. When I arrived, they informed me that he had an alcoholic coma and luckily there was no sequel. I preferred not to scold him but I admit I was frustrated and disappointed by his inconsequentiality. So after he was discharged from the hospital, I asked him if he could walk. He said yes and asked the doctor if there was any problem with him walking. He said he just has to go a little slow. We left the hospital and I told him he would have to walk home 
two kilometers away, because if he was old enough to go into an alcoholic coma, he's able to get home by himself. And I left him there. It wasn't dark, but I could hear him complaining and saying it was unfair. He arrived 40 minutes later, complaining to the walls about how cruel I was in making him walk after he was in the hospital, and that he can't ask for an Uber because he had lost his cell phone. He was with his friend. My husband, not his father, the father agrees with me, said that I was pretty hard on him and that maybe it wasn't the best way to deal with it. Am I the jerk? My son's fully capable of walking two kilometers. He's already walked six to kiss a girl. I think OP is pretty clearly the jerk here. I fully understand wanting to have some kind of reprimand for your kid being so reckless, but honestly, I'm of the opinion that this is the one situation where you need to put that aside and just show them that you're fully there to support them and help them. I fully subscribe to the belief that parents should do the free pass method, where you basically sit your kid down and say, listen, I know you're probably going to get in trouble. If there's a situation where things are going haywire, you're in some deep stuff, I don't care what, contact me, I'll get you, no questions asked, no trouble. Because the idea is, them being scared enough to contact you in that situation is probably punishment enough and enough of a learning lesson. OP son here ending up in the hospital like this? I feel like that should serve as lesson enough. I feel like the poor 19 year old kid has experienced enough and forcing them to walk 2 kilometers home on top of everything is just a bit ridiculous. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk here story that was way crazier than any of the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or, if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.